Shall we play a game? All right, guys, this is Element Quattro, and we are playing It Moves. Now, this is a game in which uh, we play a kid that's having nightmares. It's an RPG maker game, as you can see. And, um, yeah, let's give it a go. Poster from a movie. I got it for my brother. Full of toys and stuff. It's a wolf. It's a bunk bed. I sleep in the top. A table. A table. Mr. Teddy. I cannot prove what happened to me was objectively real. But I can swear what I experienced was genuine horror. A fear which, in my life, I'm glad to say, has never been equaled. I will relate it to you all now as best I can. Make of it what you will, but I'll be glad to just get it off my chest. Now, I believe this is a game made based on a creepypasta. This is my father. Don't go pulling out too much stuff now. It's bedtime soon. I can't remember exactly when it started, but my apprehension towards falling asleep seemed to correspond with me being moved into a room of my own. This is my mother. How do you like your new room? Soon you'll be sleeping alone for the first time. Mm -hmm. Alex Trebek? A man with a mustache. Same thing. Just a bunch of clothes in here. This is my brother's room. He told me yesterday to keep out of the room that we both shared until then. That we both had shared until then. I was eight years old at the time. Until then, I had shared a room quite happily with my older brother. As is perfectly understandable for a boy five years my senior, my brother eventually wished for a room of his own, and as a result, I was given the room at the back of the house. As my brother was given a new bed, I was given the bunk beds which we used to share. While I was upset about sleeping on my own, I was excited at the thought of being able to sleep on the top bunk, which seemed far more adventurous to me. It's locked, stupid bro. So am I just going to bed now, or what's that? Well... Alright, it's bedtime. Already? Yes, adults need their sleep, you see. You'll be sleeping alone for the first time. You excited? Yes, Mom. Alright, I'm turning off the lights. Good night. Good night. Chapter 1. Cave. Uh, I didn't think this would be long enough to have chapters. Okay. This might be a long one off. Save to which file? I guess. Is that me? No. Oh no, I'm over here in the bushes. I thought I was that thingy. Hello, Mr. Thingy. Are you a bad? Oh, you're... Oh, you're... Okay. You're in the foreground. I can't talk to you. Doop, doop, doop. Well, well, well. Ah. A pot and some ragged cloth. I wonder what's cooking. 
probably me pretty soon. Are you moving? Stop that. Stalking is such a strong word. I prefer to think of it more as intense research on one individual. By the way, your missing sock is under your bed with me. Just kidding. I don't really like you. But could you not... A cold, unwelcoming breeze comes from the bottom of the stairs. Go down, find someone's gonna chase me. Weird mushroom, looks poisonous. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Still looks poisonous. No, 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 no. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know what that is. I want to get out of here. Something is following me. Oh, Jesus. Sweet baby Jane. Now just flipping me off. Ah, stupid muscles. Okay. All right. Those two are dead. Eventually, I'm going to figure this out. God damn it. Well, there we go. Brute force works again. I should have reset that puzzle, then it wouldn't be following me. Oh no. Don't look over there. Keep going. What are you, what are you doing? God, kid has the survival instincts of a dodo. Okay, kid, this isn't the time to slow down. Nope, it's behind me. Yep, right behind me. And it got me. Did I, did I die? Am I di am I died? Mom, I had a bad dream. I my voice is gonna my voice is gonna be pissed off that I gave this kid this voice, but I mean. My, my my throat is gonna kill me, but you know, stick with the bit, Mom. Oh no, this is this is not right. No 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 no. Hey, wake up, Mom. I had a bad dream. Sweetie, what's wrong? I had a bad dream. Oh, that's too bad, sweetie. I'll be up in a minute and we can eat breakfast together. All right. Hurry up. Go change your clothes and I'll be right there. What scary thing is going to happen to me betwixt now and me changing my clothes? And so another day started. It was a day of little importance to our story. I won't bother you with details. The one thing I remember 
is that even though I played with friends like I always did, I somehow still felt lonely. I didn't enter my new room until later that night. It was time to go to sleep again. That ghostly green arrow was a new development. I decided not to bother my mother with it. Oh no, this was a mistake. No, let me out. No, no, no. Chapter 2. Labyrinth. Ugh, sounds like there's going to be a lot of puzzles. Boop. Boop. Hmm. Hmm. Puzzle, puzzle. Oh, this is just going to be a brute force trial and error puzzle. Wait. Happy face. Sad face, sad face. Happy face. Sad face. Well, we move forward. I'm gonna go this way. Some kind of machinery. I thought it was a poster. Well, something's going to chase me through here, isn't it? It's a maze. Anacorp. What's that? Hmm. Hello. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, now there's a face. I can see it. Oh, this is making me uneasy. Damn it. I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to be going. What are you? Nothing of interest, I think. Oh, am I supposed to be finding all these things? Yeah, face, I see you. Okay. That's great. these things. I'm supposed to be finding the red Jawas. Yeah, okay, there's a face. Blah, 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 boo. Are these things, like, chasing me? Or? Like, the face is scary and all. face. Did I lose? When you wake up from a deep sleep to something moving or stirring, it can take a few moments for you to truly understand what's happening. The fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears, even when lucid. Something was moving. There was no doubt about that. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. 
Everything was dark, almost pitch black. There was enough light creeping in from outside to, to outline that room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to the noise. A noise which had obviously woken me. That was it. Bed sheets rustling in the dark and someone breathing. As if some disturbed sleeper was attempting to get all too comfortable in a bottle bunk. I lay there in disbelief thinking about that noise. Thinking that noise was either my imagination or perhaps just my pet cat finding some more comfort to spend the night. Actually, I'm kind of thinking it's probably your brother because he might not be comfortable sleeping by himself. It was then that I noticed my door. Shut as it had been as I'd fallen asleep. Perhaps my mom had checked in on me, and the cat had sneaked in the room. Yes, that must have been it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in the vain hope that I could fall back to sleep. As I moved, the rustling noise from underneath me ceased. I thought that I must have disturbed my cat. But quickly I realized the visitor in the bottom bunk was much less mundane than my pet trying to sleep, and much more sinister. As if alerted to and disgruntled by my presence, the disturbed sleeper began to toss and turn violently, like a child having a tantrum in their bed. For an eight-year-old, I think with great prose. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not like the subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now poked and terrifying. Uh, my heart raced as my eyes panicked. Scanning the almost impenetrable darkness, I let out a cry. As most young boys do, I instinctively shouted on my mother. I could hear something stir on the other side of the house. But as I began to breathe a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to save me, the bunk beds suddenly started to shake violently as if gripped by an earthquake, scraping against the wall. I could hear the sheets below me thrashing as if tormented by malice. I did not want to jump down to safety, as I feared the thing in my bottom would reach out and grab me, pulling me into the darkness, so I stayed there, white knuckles clenching my own blanket as a shot of protection. The wait seemed like an eternity. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I cried and my mother consoled me. Tears of fear followed by relief streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and relief, I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return if I even so much as spoke of it. Whatever that was the truth. Whether that was the truth, I do not know. But as a child, I felt... But as a child, I felt it as if that unseen menace remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk, promising to stay there until morning. I remember the next day wanting to go anywhere, be anywhere, but in that suffocating room. It was a Saturday and I played outside, quite happily with my friends. Although our house was not large, we were lucky to have a long, sloping garden in the back. We played there often. As much of it was overgrown, and we could hide in the bushes climb in the huge sycamore tree which towered over above all else and easily imagine ourselves in the throes of a grand adventure. As fun as it all was, occasionally my eye would turn to that small window in my room, ordinary sight innocuous. But for me, that thin boundary was looking was a looking glass into a strange, cold pocket of dread. Outside the lush green surroundings of our garden filled the <laughs> of our garden filled with the smiling faces of my friends. Inside, the feeling of something in that room watching me play, waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back into that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest. I didn't even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep there. I still felt that this thing would be enraged if I so much as spoke of it. Another night came. Another night came. 